Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. What I, have, what I had in mind was to show you more ways of creating HTTP requests. Now, the other ways that I want to show you about creating HTTP requests require us to download third-party libraries, and we're not to that point yet. So I want to take you step by step and build on that knowledge. So we are going to jump into the next lecture here by, or this lecture, by showing you how to create a web server. Once I show you how to create everything like core, um, you know, using core modules, then we jump into third party libraries. Okay, deal? Let's get to it. So what I want, what I want to do is create a server. Now you might, if you come from PHP, from my other courses, this is just going to kind of take you to another path. We're used to seeing Apache handling all our requests and we're used to seeing this done automatically for, automatically for us when we are you know, coding in, let's say, PHP. Now, with Node, or should I say JavaScript, right? We have to create our own servers. Now, this might sound like an overwhelming task, but I can assure you that it's super easy to do. So. We can create our own servers using a built-in module. We're going to continue that path until things become too hard and then we do it with third-party modules. But right now, let's create a server. Let me show you how this works. So we're going to require this module, HTTP. And we, can, we, we can, of course, require, require HTTPS if we wanted to you know, have our server secure. Now. The issue with that is that you need to have some type of certificate to use in your server. We don't have one here. Most of the time, you're going to have to purchase it. The same thing as having it with the uh, a certificate. Okay, the it doesn't really affect the lecture much. So let's continue with this. So the way we do this, the way we create servers is by create bringing in the HTTP module okay then we invoke a function or where or set up some type of listener for requests right to our application and our application is gonna be hosted let's say on the web somewhere and every time somebody makes a request to that domain to that URL our application is going to react and in this case we're doing everything in development so our location would be probably like localhost, right? Because that's the location of our server, right? Our default environment. So we are going to create this variable to hold some information here. We are going to be using the module and there is this built-in function here called create server. This is where we place this listener. This function is going to get invoked every time there is a request. We invoke this function and then everything else comes back to us. Like for example, not when I say everything else, I mean we get a callback function to us that we can then use to do other things. For example, in this create server, there is this callback function inside and I could write it like this if I want to, remember that? Or I could just take this off in the new syntax for ES6. So we're gonna get two objects back to us. The first object is the request object. And the request object is the request that's being sent to our server. That's the request that has been sent. And we grab it and then we can, you know, do things with it. And the same thing with the response. But since the request object, okay, has data that, you know, that, that could have data being sent to us, we also need to do things with it. But right now we don't need to do anything with it because that request, for example, has to be set up in the other side. Like for it, if, I, if I'm creating an application that's going to request some type of information, remember that we went here and we go ahead and set that up in this side, right? So in this case, we're just gonna, we're gonna go get data. But if we wanted to send data, then we would just post we will send a post request, okay? And then we set everything up, everything else inside. Now, let's go back here. This request object can have a lot of data. And let me show you some of the data that it, could, that it can have because I want you to be aware of it, okay? 
so I have Google here and if you go to Google and just refresh you're gonna if you go to the network tab on your browser you see that Google gets some get requests we got a get request from Google here all right we're pulling information and we see that we get a status code you're gonna see this a lot It's a get request because we're going to the Google server and this is basically the response headers look at that that's the data okay so it's saying it's taking HTML that's why you see the page you see some stuff here okay the character set is UTF it means that it has a lot of different uh, characters inside to de detect many different languages he has a lot of information he has cookie information I mean you name it is here and then it has information about our system it has the fight it says that it's using Firefox Mozilla here I'm using a Macintosh so there's a lot of information in that request header okay so here the request header already has predefined information when you're sending it from this side right when you're sending that request or you're trying to get some but the response object okay it's something that we need to fill in we need to create what type of response we want in this case we use a function called write head okay to write to the header and we're gonna send a status code of 200 because we want the response to be good to the user, right? If they send a request to our server, we're gonna send, hey, listen, everything is okay, that's the status code, everything is okay. There are some, we actually, when we write application, sometimes we detect for the status code to be 200. If the status code is 200, then we go ahead and create and do other things with our application. We see that a lot in Ajax. So. The second parameter here of this function is what we want. In this case, we want to write something to the header. We want to set something to the header. This is pre-built text inside our defin header um, server definition. So content type, I'm not making this up. This is all, it's uppercase here, hyphen and uppercase here, okay? This would be the key of that object and I want it to be text and it's going to be plain. Now, the response I'm sending it, I'm going to end the response with some text here. I'm going to say, hi guys, it's Edwin Diaz. Yeah, there we go. Now, in order for us to finish this, we need to uh, end it by listening to requests in some type of port. Because right now we are listening nowhere. So, Let's use that variable that we have here, okay, that we created, and let's listen to anything that comes to, let's say, port 9000 or 9100. Now, usually you're going to see people putting 3000. They are not going to put 3000 just because I know that I'm using something in my computer in that port. So I'm just going to put 9111. Now looks what happen look what happens when I execute this file server enter you see that this cursor is blinking here that's because it means that our server is actually running so if I go to here and I type in 9111 enter you can see that our response is there okay and if you go to the top here you see the status code here our remote address here text plane and you can see some of the information on my computer down here which is great so let's go back here real quick and let's just make sure that we see that our server is running we could do this by doing a log and writing something here our server is running okay let's come back here and if you want to see the changes here you're gonna have to cancel your server you're gonna have to turn it off basically restart it so control C and then up again for the next command the previous command enter again 
and now you can see that it says our server is running if you want changes to take effect you need to turn this off all the time okay now there are modules third-party library modules that we can install later on to do this automatically for us so every time we make a change it will detect that we're making a change and we'll restart our servers but we're not up there yet we're not up to that lesson yet okay so now if I wanted to send HTML here I just do HTML let's do some HTML tags here and let's restart our server again and I have this here I always forget I'll do that in the next tab refresh and now you can see that we see those HTML tags let's make this a little bigger here see that now our browser our application is now really reading this we, when we send it back our browser is like okay you just want to display text we know that so we're gonna display text for you okay that's not really what I want right so I'm gonna tell this in the header that I want HTML that our text is going to be HTML I'm gonna restart the server come back again refresh and now you see that it's actually reading HTML and if you check this you can see the HTML here okay see that so that's it for this lecture I don't want to go and, and by the way guys you can make this whatever port you want as long as you're not using it in your server okay make sure that you're not using it there is a command to actually find out what type of if you are using one of these and you gotta just type it for your operating system and if you go here and you say um, what request is in this port and this is just to give an explanation um, or find find open ports Mac okay then you'll go here somewhere and you'll find some type of command here okay so depending on your operating system you might want to do something like this to try to find out what is happening in your computer and I do that all the time okay and I actually have a shortcut but I'm not going to go into details I have an alias for that because it's an inconvenience to be writing this all the time okay so once you type this into into your computer you will start seeing the type of um, ports that are open okay and it will tell you okay and it's using the netstat command here you see some of my ports and local holes are open as you can see that okay but anyway thank you so much for watching guys let's continue with the next lectures on this HTTP uh, section. Let's learn some more stuff. Keep it up, and I'll see you in the next lectures.